Welcome ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are after the PDAC 2019 now here in Toronto and uh, yeah, Commodity TV is still here and we are at the offices of McEwen Mining and with me here is famous Rob McEwen, the chairman and chief owner of the company, yeah, who wants to give us an update. Rob, good morning. Okay. Pleasure. Yeah, thanks for taking the time. Very impressive, uh, impressive offices. I must say, it looks really good here. You can stay longer if you like. Yeah, <laughs> probably I should do so. <laughs> <laughs> no great view, and I mean you have a successful company. Uh, you really deserve it for sure. Um, aside of that, 2018 is over. Yeah, we yes. want to chat about the results for sure. But first, I would love to hear a comment uh, as you have just suspended your dis your distribution. What's the reason for that? Uh, we have pay a cent a year and have for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. And this year, we had two operations. Uh, we were starting a mine called our Gold Bar Mine in Nevada. Mm -hmm. And it was, it's was it been slower starting up than we had hoped for. And our Gold Bar Mine, not our Gold Bar, sorry, our Black Fox Mine, mm -hmm. too many names, Yeah. <laughs> uh, in Timmins, Ontario, Canada, had a crusher problem that has impaired some of our revenue. So I expect our first quarter is going to be weak, mm -hmm. um, but it's temporary. Mm -hmm. And uh, the crusher problems at Black Fox have been fixed, and mm -hmm. we're addressing the issues at Gold Bar right now. Oh, fantastic. So you're but, fixed. But, but it just seemed prudent yeah. not just to conserve cash and get mm -hmm. through this quarter. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. But I think that makes absolutely sense not to put anything on risk. Um, let's come back to Gold Bar because this is like the, the next mine you are yes. bringing into production. And I think commercial production is anticipated for the second quarter of this yeah, year, that's right? That's correct. Yeah, this is still on track? It's still commissioning. We poured our first bar in the middle of February. Mm -hmm. It was a tiny bar, 390 yeah. ounces, Doesn't but matter. it shows there's gold, some gold exactly. there. <laughs> um, so part of the problem was... Um, in Nevada, there appeared to be a shortage of manpower. It's, mm -hmm. it's a big gold producing state and the state's running pretty, pretty much full employment, which mm -hmm. is good to hear, but uh, where our mine is, it's about a half hour further away from the main center, uh, main community mm -hmm. than Carlin, which is the big gold producing mm -hmm. area. So they've had trouble attracting people oh, there. Really? So we were about 10 people oh. short. So we weren't getting the ore 24-7, mm -hmm. we were getting it 12-7. Mm -hmm. And then the crusher, there's a clay component in the ore, mm -hmm. and with the heavy snowfalls I've been getting, there's been a lot more moisture, oh, and yes. it's been plugging up the crusher. Of so course, uh... I would have liked had it all dealt with when we started at the beginning of the year, mm -hmm. but there seemed to be some people who didn't think there'd be snow in 6,000 yeah. feet in northeastern Nevada. Well, it could happen. I heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, this year there's a lot of snow. It's yeah. great for the skiers, yeah, yeah. but not for starting a mine. So yeah. we'll get on top of it by the end of the second quarter. And okay, super. So that is also fixed, and you, you let's say you have it's identified being fixed the problems. Right now. We've exactly. identified it's all the fixed. problems. Yes. And it's done, and so you are back on track, I would call it. We're getting back on track. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say we're on track okay. at Gold Bar. <laughs> super. Um, yeah, then let's uh, let's talk about um, your yeah I would call exploration investments for 2019. Yeah, because to me the world is lagging ex exploration for sure. Um, this is yeah the merits maybe of the financial crisis. Yeah, also I heard that the PDAC down at the floor it's already drying out again. Projects are not getting financed. Only a handful good projects, of course, get financed. Yeah. So on the other hand, you have very good projects in your pipeline, of course. Yeah. Yes. So what is the matter for 2019? How well, do you plan to invest? I'll step back a year. Mm -hmm. Last year, we spent $19 million on exploration at our Black Fox property. These are US dollars, not mm -hmm. Canadian. And we spent five in Nevada. Mm -hmm. We spent a total of um, 27, 30 million dollars on exploration. So I'm a big believer in exploration. When I built Gold Corp, we explored heavily. Mm -hmm. And it had been a mine that hadn't been explored for quite a while. And, mm -hmm. and then it we found a big deposit a mile below surface. So the Black Fox, I'll start with Black Fox first in Timmins. Mm -hmm. It's in mm -hmm. a very prolific district for gold, yeah. an area that's been producing gold for 100 years. And when we bought the mine, we only paid basically six cents on the dollar. The previous owners had purchased the property in 2014. They paid $560 million 
or invested 560, 300 million to buy the company that owned the property. Mm -hmm. uh, they issued stock. They absorbed 140 million dollars in liabilities, and then they put in another 120 million dollars into the property. Mm -hmm. So they're up to 560 million, and we bought it for 35 million. Nice deal. Yes, but when you buy something that's so discounted, it doesn't work right away. No, nope, you have no, to put some money into it, <laughs> and so it lacked a good geological model in my mind mm -hmm. and the geological model drives your mine plan mm -hmm. and your reserve life so mm -hmm. I said well what we have to do is get on this and improve the 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 geological knowledge of the property mm -hmm. and and then we can get a good mine plan and we've seen in our drilling I mean we've had some exceptional grades throughout the mine but the mine was only producing about five gram material mm -hmm. and I'm going how come there's 27 grams over there and there's 200 grams over there? And right at the, mm -hmm. we drilled the deepest hole ever drilled on the property down to 1,050 meters. And it was running 55 grams over 1.2 meters, which is a good indication that it probably extends deeper. Mm -hmm. But it also extends laterally. Mm -hmm. So we're concentrating on the upper two thirds of the mine right now, seeing if we can extend the mine life there. And then we're going around this property. There are two property packages we ended up with. And they concentrated, the previous owners had concentrated in a couple of areas, but left a huge area unexplored. Mm -hmm. So last year was, can we improve the resource base we have in the known resort, uh, zones, mm -hmm. mineral zones? And then can we go out and ident identify new targets? Mm -hmm. And we did. And we have about seven of those that we want to follow up. So this year, our exploration budget is $17 million mm -hmm. there. Through uh, over our, all our properties, it's $27 million. So again, it's um, this belief that exploration, actually in the shadow of a previous mine, yeah. can lead you to more resources. Mm -hmm. Mm, great. So what's the results and reserve situation overall the company? Um, we've expanded our resource in Nevada. We mm -hmm. extended it by a year, the gold bar. Mm -hmm. And we think we have another year at least from the gold that we bought on a property next door. Mm -hmm. So it'll be up to, right now it's seven and a half years, and we think we can get it to um, eight and a half to nine year life. Mm -hmm. Um, at Black Fox, in the mine, we eliminated certain resources mm -hmm. uh, where we thought we wouldn't be able to mine it. Mm -hmm. And there's 1.3 million ounces there. There's another 2 million ounces sitting about mm -hmm. 30 miles away in Timmins that we mm -hmm. bought in April of 2017. Um, so we're at Timmins, we're at Gold Bar. Mm -hmm. Down in Argentina at our San Jose mine, they basically just found what they mined mm -hmm. during the year. Um, and then we have our, um, in, where is it, Mexico. Yeah. I'm trying to think of all these properties. <laughs> so we're, we're in Canada, the United States, yeah. Mexico, and Argentina. Mm -hmm. In Mexico, we have a gold mine there that we stopped producing in May of last year. Mm -hmm. It's an open pit open cast gold mine. Mm -hmm. um, it's doing residual leaching, so the heap leach pads were just continuing to apply mm -hmm. solution on them. Mm -hmm. And that'll go for another couple of years. And we have a silver deposit that is five kilometers away mm -hmm. that is permitted to construct. And we chose not to do it when we got the permit in 2015. And in between 2015 and now, we looked at it and said, oh, we could change this a bit rather than building a standalone plant five kilometers away and a separate tailings facility process plant. Why don't we bring that plant back to where we have the gold mine mm -hmm. and infrastructure? And rather than building a tailings facility, which is just your waste product, um, above ground, you know that hole we dug for the gold mine, why don't we fill it up? Yeah. And I thought, well, that's a really elegant way of dealing with this environmental issue Absolutely. and say it costs us less to do it, it uses far less water, mm -hmm. and then the rehabilitation, 
putting it back to the natural state. So it's cheaper. Much cheaper. Yeah. And you don't have the problems that happen in a lot of tailings dams that have been happening, like Valet's oh, the collapse, disastrous yeah. thing. Absolutely. There. So yeah, yeah. this, um, we're asking the Mexican government to amend the, the permit they granted us in 2015. Mm -hmm. And we expect to get that by the, the end of uh, Q2 this year. That uh, has a 12-year life, and we'd be producing about three, three and three-quarter million ounces of silver a year. Mm -hmm. um, Fantastic. Yeah. Well, so that sounds really it's great. It's growing. And then we yeah. have our copper project, yeah. and it's in a class of its own. Mm -hmm. It's a very large copper project. Um, it's 29.5 billion pounds of copper, mm -hmm. uh, grading 0.4% copper. It's, um, if you were to put it on a gold equivalent, you have to excuse the alchemy of changing <laughs> copper to gold. It's easier. <laughs> but on a gold equivalent, just to give you a sense of scale, mm -hmm. um, it would be equivalent to uh, approximately 70 million ounce gold deposit. Seven zero. Seven zero. <sighs> and it would have a life of, based on the current uh, preliminary economic assessment, which mm -hmm. is like a business plan, it would run for 36 years. In the first 13 years, it would be producing 414 million pounds of copper a year. Mm -hmm. Some gold, some silver. Mm -hmm. um, if you converted that to gold, that would be a gold equivalent of about a million ounces a year and at a cost of about $550 an ounce. Wow, that's outstanding. So to me, that's one of the big assets we have and copper if you look at it with mm -hmm. electric use and all that um, it can only rise to be honest that's that's my thinking yeah so so right now we're working the project is somewhat remote it's in northern argentina close to the border with chile mm -hmm. you can drive into it very easily five months of the year mm -hmm. but the other seven months of the year is very difficult mm -hmm. so we're working on a road and it ties into exploration in a way mm -hmm. we're working on a an alternative route that would allow us to get in there 12 months of the year uh -huh. below the snow line Very good. and open up the value of yeah. this project. Fantastic. How much money is needed uh, to invest? A small approximately. amount. Uh, initial estimates, $2.4 billion. Small amount. Okay. <laughs> I like the thinking. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, guidance for 2019. What's well, the plan? Uh, we did um, 176,000 <coughs> ounces of gold equivalent, that's gold, silver. Mm -hmm. This year, uh, we'll do 210,000. This or That was last year. This year, we'll mm -hmm. do 210. Mm -hmm. um, the year after, we'll see a slight increase in that. That's because of the new mine yes. going online, of course. That's right. Uh -huh. And improvements at Black Fox, mm -hmm. we think we can achieve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fantastic. Improvements, that's also one of the keywords. How do you think you can further reduce in the future the AIC, or meaning you're all in production costs? Our highest cost is our Black Fox mine. Mm -hmm. It's also the one we bought cheaply. Yeah. Um, there are a number of areas that I think we can improve on. There was a mismatch of equipment. under. It's an underground mine. So you have shovels and trucks that move, take the ore all the way up mm -hmm. to surface takes about an hour. Mm -hmm. We had trucks that were only being two-thirds full mm -hmm. because of the equipment matching or mismatch. Mm -hmm. uh, we've parked a lot of equipment. We have uh, reduced the employment at the mine by about 70 people. Mm -hmm. uh, it, the mine, when we bought it, and it's still, we're working on it, but only had two working areas. Mm -hmm. So you didn't have a lot of flexibility if you had a problem in one. Mm -hmm. So we're working to get three to four working areas mm -hmm. in the mine. Um, grade control was an issue in my mind. As I said, we have a lot of visible gold showing up, mm -hmm. but so it's the long hole drill holes. You drill these long holes into the rock mm -hmm. and you blast and the grade gets diluted because you have a lot of material that's not mineral. Okay. So if you slow that down and take shorter sections of mm -hmm. rock out, mm -hmm. you can have better grade control. Mm -hmm. Now, to illustrate what's happening, we take our R up mm -hmm. and we put it in a crusher. There's a third party that does the crushing for us, a contractor. Yeah. And they crush it down to a size of 
minus three-eighths of an inch. So I'm trying to put that in metric, but it, mm -hmm. it's a smaller piece. <laughs> yeah, it's really small, yeah. <laughs> it's about <laughs> um, <clears throat> maybe a centimeter. Mm -hmm. So then, but they're probably crushing it too fine, and, and visible gold is coarse, yeah. so it falls out. And to give an illustration, this crusher outside our mine was, um, it has three stages to it, and there's, it's not enclosed, so mm -hmm. the wind blows through. Mm -hmm. Our geologist the other day went out, I was, I was up there three, three weeks ago, and talking to the geologist, and they said, you know, this dust blowing onto the snow, we decided to sample it. Mm -hmm. It was gold dust. It was gold dust, oh. and it was running four grams. That's not good. In the snow. No, well, no, no. it didn't go away. I mean, yeah. you're, you're going to pick it up when the snow melts, but yeah. but it's not good. Yeah. So we've determined they've crushed the rock too small. Mm -hmm. So if if you left the rock a larger size and mm -hmm. then trucked it to our process plant mm -hmm. or mill, um, you could recover more of that gold. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. working places, mismatched yeah. equipment, um, overstaffed, mm -hmm. and not paying attention to the gold or how yeah. you might be losing yeah. the gold. Yeah. Super. So we think we've dropped the, we're projecting that the costs are coming down $100 an ounce all in, mm -hmm. and we oh, hope over the next money. couple of years we'll be able to drop it further. Mm -hmm. um, the mine reminds me a lot of the Red Lake mine, which was the engine that built Gold Corp when I was mm -hmm. running Gold Corp. And there we'd bought a mine that had a short mine life, three years. It had a very difficult history of labor relations, mm. and it was high cost. Um, we went through a labor dispute that lasted for quite a long time, um, but, and we stopped production. But when we resumed production, we went from 50,000 ounces a year annual production to 500,000 ounces a year annual production. Our costs went from $360 an ounce at the time to sixty dollars an ounce. Wow! So there was a sixty-fold change in the economics of the mine, yeah. and I'm not saying that's going to happen at Black Fox, mm -hmm. but it reminds me a lot of Red Lake, mm -hmm. and there are opportunities to improve mm -hmm. on what we're doing. So uh, yeah. we're excited about that, but cautiously excited. Yeah, yeah, of course. I, I mean, it's a way of development. It needs a little bit of time also. Yes. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Gold Corp. Yes. Last keyword for the interview. I mean, your, I would say your baby is taken over now. What do you think about the merger mania in the sector? How do you rate that? Is that on the one hand, let's say the bottom of uh, the downtrend? Because all, all the time, at, uh, yeah, I would say on the downtrend, the merger mania starts. We saw that, I think, uh, also some, what was it, a good 12, 15 years ago. Yes. Uh, easily, yeah, before silver and gold restarted to really go up. Um, now, this time, the same thing. Uh, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, looking at it, one, it's not a done deal yet. <clears throat> yeah. And two, I think that Gold Corp has just got a second chance. If the deal doesn't go through with Newmont, mm -hmm. there is a break fee, and Gold Corp would receive, if Newmont didn't mm -hmm. complete the deal, Gold Corp would receive a check for $650 million. Nice dividend. Nice dividend. That's, mm -hmm. a 60, that's equivalent to 75 cents a share. Mm -hmm. They could pay down some of the debt they've taken mm -hmm. on. They could buy another property. They could yeah. improve a property. Or, as you said, they could give the shareholders a dividend of yeah. 75 cents. Yeah. Um, yeah. To me, it's a gift. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of the merger space, yes, we're going to have one or two mega companies. Mm -hmm. They'll come with their own operating issues. I think Barrick doing it, they've had some momentum. Mm -hmm. The market likes the Rangold CEO, Mark Bristow. Mm -hmm. So, and he's saying, look, I'm going to cut all the expenses and we're going to make this run more efficiently. Mm -hmm. um, he is going to end up with about 26 or 24 companies or mines, mm -hmm. which is a little daunting. So he'll probably sell. Um, Newmont, I'm not sure what it's going to, if it's taken over, then there's some other players that are going to start consolidating. We had Pan American buy Tahoe, mm -hmm. and then Newmont wanted to buy Gold Corp. Yeah. And Rand Gold and, uh, and Barrick got yeah. together. We, we <clears> had <throat> a number of investment bankers coming through and saying, hey, you should look at this. We think as a result of these mergers, there's going to be this many properties coming on the, on yeah. the market. 
So could be interesting for you. Yes, I think it'd be interesting for a yeah, lot of yeah. companies because you're going to see junior and interme small intermediates become bigger as they pick up some of these properties. Mm -hmm. And when we were talking earlier, I said, is this a sign of the bottom of the market? Mm -hmm. And certainly you can look back to last cycles and when the majors were shedding properties, mm -hmm. um, it historically marked the bottom of the market. Yeah, absolutely. So, so um, we've seen a lot of the majors selling Australian properties and the Australians yeah. have done well picking them yeah. up. Yeah. Um, I do think though that there's a, going to be a bigger supply of markets, so it might, of uh, products, so uh, properties that might put a cap in the near term mm -hmm. on some exploration and development stories mm -hmm. because now you're faced with more choice. You could say, well, that's a really attractive exploration story or development story, but maybe I could buy some production over here mm -hmm. for not a lot more money. Mm -hmm. And and what do I value more? Yeah, yeah. Production. Immediate cash flow. Or uh, or a project yeah. that I now have to permit, finance, and build. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it it might we might be sitting here looking at it for a bit, but I do think the gold market's ripe for a move and not down. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Fantastic. Rob, thank you very much. Uh, that was a great final statement. Gold markets move up, not down. I like that too. And yeah, wish you all the best and uh, that you yeah, completely overcome all the issues you might have or you still might have. And uh, yeah, keep it going, I would say. And uh, we talk uh, quite soon, probably already in April, I don't know, in yeah. uh, Zurich. And thank you very much. I look forward to that. And thank you very much for braving the cold of Toronto. Yeah. <laughs> That's not my operational temperature, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Rob. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was Rob McEwen, the chief owner of uh, McEwen Mining, and you heard it. He is positive for gold. He also thinks um, that this is really the bottom of the market here, hopefully now, uh, with this merger mania going on. And But what is also interesting, and he's the first one saying that really, um, that a lot yeah, more variety, a lot more yeah, maybe properties will come into the market for sales through that merger mania, because because uh, the big guys, yeah, they also have to focus. And it's going to be a big interesting putting a cap on some development and exploration stories. But anyhow, we need more exploration. We need more mines in this world, especially for copper, but also for gold, for silver. And uh, yeah, Rob is on the right path here. Also, what I really like with him is he is openly talking about the problems they faced uh, with the ramp up in their mines and with uh, the problems they faced up with clay in uh, one of their mines. So. This is transparency, this is honesty, and this is how it should be. And I would say, check out the company. Thanks for watching us, and bye-bye from Toronto.